You did actually favour England a little bit, didn't you? Yeah, it's all politics, the reason I didn't get any more caps. Mm. nothing to do with uh, talent levels. I've been involved with selection, it hasn't been easy. It's good that you've got your boots in case two or three or you know, sort of seven or eight guys get injured, there may be a spot for you, but for today, wow. guys, you're, you're not required. I'm actually ecstatic to be here, you know. Just on the way to Twickers, guys, back of the car, shades on. Hello and welcome to the Maxi Nutrition Head-to-Head -head Challenge. Hello and welcome to a new season of Green Flag at the Breakdown. Thanks for joining me, boys. Great start for Quinn so far this season. Do you think there's any sort of risk that the fact that his head looks exactly like a rugby ball? <laughs> Critiquing referees' performance is one thing, but hammering somebody for being an awful bloke, and awful at his job, makes me uncomfortable. Did you watch much of the Rugby Championship? Yeah, time? I watched all of it. Geez, they know how to win. They're in that habit. They've been in that habit for about 30 years, unfortunately. <laughs> they don't seem to have kicked it yet. First up, Aviva Premiership Round 5, Northampton against Gloucester. Good afternoon everyone, I'm David Flatman, I'm coming to you live from our ITV commentary position. It's all very Hollywood, no expense spared, mind you I haven't even got a coffee yet. What's it like, you played in a few? It's great fun, you kind of wake up excited for three or four seconds, then you realise it's Derby Day and you, you remain terrified until kick-off. So that wasn't the Royal Wheel in any way, shape or form, does that include David Luke Flatman alongside me? Lancelot. Whatever. It sounds like it's Operation Slow Australia down and that might not be a bad plan. I expect them to offer some decent resistance up front. Their front five has gone really well, especially with Ford and Johnny Gray back in, never in doubt. They've got a job on their hands. I talked over the ref a bit then, sorry, I had a coffee at half-time. Um, what he's saying is stop, if you're going to work an angle, do it second, go forward first. Tackling him is like tackling a cow running downhill. So agile, perhaps more agile than a... <laughs> a Monica might suggest, but incredibly powerful, low centre of gravity. And if you're not getting a good shot on him quick, he's not going down. Bye from me, and it's... Bye. Could have been a bit more powerful. That's all I got. Bye bye. That's a bit childish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that You're 19 points down, away from home. You need your big players to stand up and you need to take risks. Dan Bigger went all in. Fantastic play. Absolutely committed himself. And it paid off. Just a few short months ago, the stadium over my right shoulder was packed to the rafters. There were seconds left on the clock and Bath Rugby were romping to victory in the Premiership semi-final. Fast forward, this season so far, it's an entirely different story. We've come to Bath to talk to some of the people within the club and within the city about what they think is going on. Yes! result <laughs> and I said that's what you think mate I'm never going to get picked again <laughs> it must make them feel incredibly proud and you imagine that not all of these kids but lots of them may not have felt like that very often in their lives it's hugely impactful I think we obviously went out and, and beat New Zealand the day after and they, they labelled us you know white walks on steroids which uh, is a bit harsh yeah, you weren't on steroids <laughs> enjoy your rugby wherever it may take you from us both here in Coventry it's goodbye Goodbye. That worked. <laughs> yeah.